on uh, what um, Anne and um, what Martin said about um, constraining and about the specificity uh, of different domains and variability of language. So uh, although I provide an example of uh, biomedical text mining because I'm working on that for several years, it seems to me some of the discussions that we have and my, my dream is to see um, this variability of this domain being part of a, a grand plan as it were. So um, when we are starting working on that, clearly you see you use general language tools and these are typically adapted into this domain and we, when I say biomedicine you can think about legal and also basically we take language and typically we, we can see it as decomposed into different domains and then you have the whole team. And then one of the important aspects there is how all those different tools and technology and corpora and um, um, uh, lexica could be plugged in and as Metanet does into infrastructures which talk among each other, but even more so how quick and of course we're working on establishing, establishing standards among different tools and resources and services, but also applications. So I see the problem of looking at different tasks that people are working in, uh, the la not only in the language technology, but in, in, a, in the general, in the scientific domain. And how can we include the language technology infrastructure into more open and more common platforms which actually do biomedical research. And when I say research, we can think about physics, we can think about engineering and other platforms. So um, I took the, the problem of infrastructures we're doing for language, but trying to also embed it into a general platform infrastructure for doing research. So uh, here is the way, I mean, the infrastructures, and we have uh, linguistic um, language technology infrastructure platforms, we have scientific workflows, and we have uh, different biomedical and medical platforms, and all these infrastructures, they somehow need to talk to each other to be able to do something. The reason we're doing language technology is to be able to have some use. We can see it in, uh, uh, separated from the real world, or we can see it embedded Added in a specific cause. And the domains here are not only biology and uh, medicine, could be engineering, could be physics. So we're doing, we're uh, analyzing and processing language for specific domains. So my view is very much sublanguages. Uh, and then we have different applications, we do that. Uh, so language technology applications, machine translation, semantic search, summarization, question answer, answering. But also we have, in our case, uh, different types of biomedical applications, for instance, uh, constructing pathways or whatever. So the different specificities of applications and task-oriented uh, task uh, uh, needs that make us actually put different components together. And here is actually where, uh, again, uh, it, it, why I'm saying all that is about annotations. We're talking about annotations and corporate and not bridging different gaps. And as Nicoletta said also before, we all talk about uh, bridging uh, text and language with knowledge. But in order to do that, and if I take all the specific domain, I need to have all these annotated corpora. And even if I only talk about the biomedical domain, the types of annotated corpora I need are really a lot. So although we put the task quite uh, more fragmented, still, still we need to discuss about the type of resources. We have lexica, specific lexica, domain adaptation, different classifiers from name, different types of name entities, adapting parsers, annotated corporate and all that. So bridging the gap to do uh, some specific task for a specific domain and embedded language technology is actually a quite difficult task. But I would like to see a, a pool of resources and people working together to be able to do to bridge exactly that gap. 
So um, the infrastructures we have, as I said, uh, the, the, the goal is, of course, not to do it only for English, but to do it in a multilingual environment. And although you might say, but in biology, everybody's writing in English, it's not so the case for clinical data in other domains in the legal, it's par excellence in different languages. So we would like to see interoperability of tools and resources and standards to do that among different types of, of uh, language technology infrastructure Structures, but even more so, um, seeing that as part of other platforms, visualization, simulators, um, components which per se they're not being seen, of course, as part of the language technology or even uh, they're completely part of, say, biology or other domains. And why we want, what would be nice to do that is because mainly nobody can develop uh, software systems on their own and we need, as we know, without a, a, any cooperation and any um, standards or research specifically in biomedicine would be stalled. We need to be able to uh, address the problems of data sharing and um, um, currently we see that most of the tools are uh, developed independently. There are different types of uh, GUIs, APIs and so on and they need to be put together in a common uh, platform. So, um, and I think this is where I, I basically I will, I will stop. Um, it would be nice to see not only integrated NLP and text mining f f platforms, but um, a, a general scientific platforms where language technology is part of, I think is this perhaps here, the bigger picture, and that's all my last. Uh, so you have different workflows where we annotate, we share, we curate, we map into different data databases, we have services, we have editors, we have visualizers, we have simulators, text mining tools, and we have the tools and the resources we are building, lexical repositories, but also databases and so on. So the bigger picture, what I would like to see is where language technology and platforms, language technology are part of a, a general, a grand plan of platforms where we are, we are able to do research. That's it. So thank you very much, and we're looking for questions, or we continue. I mean, we can, we could continue. Hans, you always have a question, right? <laughs> yeah, sorry for that. Always having a question. But, uh, I, I was wondering, in, in, in that sense, so if, you, if, if, if you have this broad picture, in as much, because that links up to something that we may come to tomorrow, in as much um, this uh, extends uh, outside of language technology, extends to other areas. So in, how can you, because it seems that the knowledge parts, yeah, they come from completely different areas. Yeah? And that was mentioned, was mentioned a couple of times today, how we can get, uh, the, uh, how we can access this type of knowledge, either by, uh, uh, resources on the web or on uh, getting people from outside and letting them speak and so and, and, and here it's uh, closely defined communities that could be users and providers of this knowledge. Indeed, I mean... And, in, and, and have you thought about how to integrate them and, and, and tap into that in such a way that they don't feel, because they are busy researchers in their own field maybe and specialists, yeah, how they can get um, um, benefit out of it and would happily contribute yeah, without having to be paid them. It's actually, this is a very, again, a very old uh, problem. Um, well, I mean, this starts from uh, discussions that uh, in the 70s people talking about sublanguages, really, when they were talking about medical sublanguages, and they were typically um, using um, uh, either, uh, you know, they had existing, in, that, in those years, existing repositories where they're doing clinical or medical uh, research. But in, uh, in this case, in our case, it seems uh, it's obvious that there is a, an immense need from, say, the bio, to give you an example that I'm working on, domain, uh, integrating a 
mapping uh, between different databases, and those, uh, those reports and those databases do exist, they're all over, you know, uh, used by the researchers. And it's, it's obvious that the uh, need for embedding language technology inside those uh, platforms is extremely important. It's very much task, you know, oriented. So, here is actually a challenge for the language community to be able to interact with their users, with the users of the, la of, you know, the, if we're talking about integrating knowledge with language, if we want to bridge the gap, we're always saying we're doing knowledge management and information management, we need to be able to talk to specific users. And we need to provide, typically, as we're doing annota the annotated corpora, they need to be provided or to be used in such a way so they will have create meaningful tools for these specific uh, users. And uh, this, uh, uh, not our group, but many groups are doing now in, a, um, in a different ways by creating different shared tasks and so on. But it's a very time consuming way, manner, and uh, the lots of, uh, most of the time we see that the efforts are sort of um, um, fragmented, not fragmented, but they're all over the place. So what I would like to see, and I took an, as just a simple example to show also the difficulty, is um, to, to see a kind of uh, considered effort of having more task-oriented and a type of a variability of language, which in this case is, you know, domain specificity, um, but uh, putting together all those resources and all those tools, say, for bio, but also embedding them into a bigger platform. Because the, the reason people need language technology is because they don't want to do research. That's, that's the whole point. All right, there's another question. Well, actually, the reason what people want language technology is to be able to save money and to use it in their operational scenario. Uh, at least that is my experience. Uh, when it comes to a research-oriented tool base like this, uh, it is a natural evolution. But for a commercial enterprise, uh, I would say that it's very difficult to collect all of these uh, tools. For example, we have quite a few of these, but we would never ever put them on an open platform. And it's often the case, you know, there is more there in the language technology community. In industry, as well as in research, that is not really available to everybody. And this is a sad evolution, but it is a necessary one in order for us, that are small companies, to survive. Now, on the other hand, um, uh, I can give you an example. I'm working with a client uh, uh, in Alicante. We need a tool for uh, ontological creation. You know something? There is nothing available. There's absolutely nothing available that works in a commercial environment. There are some open source, open source scenarios, but there's nothing that really can be used to be able to do, do it in a, in a simple way. And this is our field. There, is, uh, there, uh, there are many more things like this. There's things that are probably lying in a university as a, as a, as a prototype. There are, I'm sure, several, but they're not available to be used in industry. So there's more to this than just the, what you're saying here. And well, there is, um, um, uh, there, there are definitely platforms and tools around, not only from, for instance, if I take the biology community, and uh, we're because we're working very closely with, with, with the, the biologists, their, their tools and their resources, which are quite mature, um, and they're open. Uh, their standards, they're, they're putting basically their act together of creating um, infrastructures which are very much open and um, um, they are uh, very keen and uh, I believe that to integrate the language technology which is equally open as we have our services open right now to the whole community. I know clearly this is not very good news for industry perhaps, <laughs> but um, I think it's extremely important to create at least a paradigm where researchers, and I do think is, uh, and we do save, uh, we hope to say that the language technology can save money to, uh, from the research to be able to do research, and that's what matters in the end. So um, um, it, it would be a very good, and I'm sure there would be much more sophisticated where industry can come later on is to produce more customized solutions for very specific you know, applications. But in essence, it's, it's good to have the general infrastructure where um, effort 
efforts, very notable efforts from various groups in universities are plugged in together in such a way so that people who perhaps don't have the funding to do research can do so. And in this case, and I just gave the snapshot of biology only, so I know it's slightly better, I just like to put the knowledge technology into the grand plan. Um, and I think it is important for us also as language technologists to gain, actually also to get, to get more funding. <laughs> it's very simple because you, know, you, want to, you want to play there with um, the users. It's always a question of money, but to tell you the truth, there are things that the industry needs from us that is just not being provided yet, and this is actually true. And uh, so, it's just my comment. Put up this platform, so, please, and I will pick something from it. Okay, bye bye. So, bas so basically, I would like very much to have. Um, I, I want. To, I think that the language technology, and I just gave an example of bio, but it's important to have it for other domains. The language technology to be properly embedded into um, other research areas. All right. So, thank you very much for the statement.